Hello, 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 wherever you happen to be on this fascinating world we call Earth, I sincerely hope you are having a genteel day, evening, or night, wherever you happen to be. Today, on my 3D channel, and as you can see, clear as day, my software preference is Blender, and today is specifically a Blender topic, but as I always love to say, if you are one of the other 3D package variants, I always welcome you to stay, because we, as we all know, Blender is rapidly gaining momentum since version 2.80. I came along when it was 2.76, so I guess then, when it was 2.76, it was still taken for a joke, or not taken particularly seriously. But, man, but now, Blender is taken serious. But no, nevertheless, my topic for the day involves the shader and the UV editor. So, let me jump right into shader, to the shading mode. I'm gonna click on the shading. Is my favorite shading mode. Now, people, when I start learning Blender with 2.76, I did learn about the UV editor, but it turned me off. Because with the UV editor, you have to keep breaking your parts up into a myriad of different pieces. You have to put seams everywhere. It's, to me, it's trial and error. But since I've been dealing with shading, I discovered you know, for the most part, for the most part, when you're dealing with shading, most of the times, you're dealing with a plane. Like I said, most of the time you're dealing with a plane because you're making something on a wall. You're dealing with, you know, flat surfaces for the most part. And that's the, and like me, i only been dealing with this shader for one year, so it's best to just do it for plane for now. Then I'll move on to more 3D dimensional shape, but I'm just going to do the plane. And I discovered then, since I'm just doing for plane, when it comes to the edit, UV editor, I don't have to worry about making a bunch of seams and none of that because my stuff is just a fat, flat plane as I'm going to show you right now. Let me go to the UV editor. Right here. If I go to the edit mode, I'm already in edit mode. If I highlight my little shape over here, I hit A, and I just move it around. It's a plane. So I don't have to be worrying about breaking it up. Over here in the edit window, it's just a plane, so I don't have to worry about breaking it up into a bunch of seams. And that's where uh, the UV editor and the shader editor all comes hand in hand. Alright, so let me minimize this. Let me check my folders. Yes, I got what I want. I'm in my little I'm on my um picture folder. Only if can I copy an image and paste it in here. I'm going to see if I can do that. So I'm going to go back to my shader. Can I paste it in here? Nope, I can't paste it. So I have to minimize this window. I have to bring it down some. Open this window back up. Bring back my UV editor and Blender. I want to put it on top. I want to choose my more options. Keep above others. Then I'm just gonna drag and drop my look like I gotta make a new texture though too. New. Hit new, that is. Then I'm gonna drag this in here. Now I can maximize it. Now, like I said, I've been with Blender for I'm at the shading for one year. I've been here with Blender to 2.76. I recently, like I said a year ago, got, got interested in shader. Shading. Or, or basically textures. That's what the shading dealing with. Shading textures. And even though I have an image, it's a texture. And I, and I read the definition for a texture. Let me see if I can still pick it up on my phone. The definition for a texture. Hold on, dear people. Let me see. Oops, I have to go. I have to do some stuff around. Oops, I guess I have to go look for the word texture again. I have to type it in. Let me type it in texture. It had a, a, a wonderful definition that I'm going to read. So you can see what a texture truly is. Let me go down here. What is a texture called? Oh, here it is, right here. Texture definition. 
And that gave me more understanding what the shader is. The shader really did them with textures. All right, here we go. The disposition or manner or, or of union of the particles of a body of a substance. So it said particles. A texture is like a bumpy surface. But to make it a texture, it cannot be one bump. The surface has a number of bumps in it. The texture of a sweater is not just the one of the, the piece of the texture of the sweater. It's the whole sweater, the feel of it, where they have holes in there or is it bumpy. That's a texture. So the texture that will affect the feel of that particular object. So when we come into the shader, the shader, keep in mind, dealing with textures and the texture of particles. So for the most part, when we use the native textures in Blender, like Warno, wood, brick, that thing keeps repeating over and over. So a texture is a repeating pattern, which we're going to see right now. All right, so I've added this in here. Let me collect it to here. Let's see what we get. There it is, my like, comment, subscribe. That's the beauty, that's the relationship of the UV editor and my um, shading. Let me go to UV editor to show you. I hope it shows up. There it is, biggest day. That shape is right. Let me highlight it all. Can I grab it? It's right inside my UV editor. The one I'm grabbing now, rotating now, ro rotating now, that represents my plane over there. So, as we can see, when it comes to images, the UV editor and the shading, it has a tight relationship. Nobody ever told me that before. No one ever said that. They may have done this, but I rarely see them employ an image now. So, remember that. UV mapping and the shading, when you bring in the images, they have a, a tight woven relationship, but it's more to it. Because when I used to be in a UV editor, right here, I couldn't change it any. You see my red, my background red, it stay red. My border yellow, it stay yellow. But I discovered in the shading, you can give your textures, like my M, more of a pizzazz to it. You can give it more possessed. I don't have to stick with the colors that naturally come with my UV image. I can change it inside the shading. Shader. Let's dive right into it. But first, as always, I just want to bring in my um. There's two ways I can do this. Since I'm dealing with, since I have a UV image, I got two ways. I can say UV map. Hook it up right here. Choose UV map right there. And that UV map represents my image. But it's not going to change much because I already cut it. Because I already have my image right over there. So But you see a switch. So that you I can go right to the UV. Um UV uh, I can go right up there to add input and just choose UV map. And I can bring in my particular UV. That's one way of doing it. But Yes, I'll leave it like that because I'll leave it just like that. Now, it's something else I want to do. I want to show you that this is a truly a texture. It don't look like it because in my image file, if I go back to the um, UV editing, it's just one image. That's it. One image. But I said in shading, your image becomes a texture. And I can, I'm going to prove it to you right now. Add vector mapping I'm going to preview that it's a texture right now we got to wait so watch I'm going to choose my location for the X you see that it's repeating just like a texture a texture repeats over and over It's a so remember when you incorporate an image into the shading it's basically uh, a texture I learned that I learned that a few days ago with them other ones I learned that everything is a texture I go on my Y, there it is. Z, because you know, it's just a plane, so it's not gonna do nothing. My rotation, I can't rotate the X, but I can rotate it on the Z. And you see, 
I rotate on a Z and it's just a texture. And I can, of course, I can scale it. You see, like that, right? But you see that repeating pattern. I rotate it on my Z. You see, I scale it on my X and my Y. You see, it's repeating. It is a pattern. But that's still beautiful right there. That's still beautiful. Because you may have a single image that you want to use as a texture, and you can make it into a, a repeating texture like um, like I was saying, like for a sweater, a brick wall, etc. So keep that in mind. Nobody ever told me that. My image that I incorporate into the shader is basically a texture. All right, so we're done with that. I mean, now I can get rid of the mapping. Zap. So we got that in mind. It's a texture. All right, so I got it back in its normal state. Now here comes. I'm going to show you what's beautiful about it. Like I said, in my UV editor, that's the cup. The, what you see is what you get. But in shading, people, you can manipulate. You can. I better say, you can manipulate in every way you want to. I'm just going to show you basic manipulation. I'm just going to go to the. Um, and I'm just going to go to the. Um, color ramp vector I'm just gonna go to the color ramp just to show you that I can change some of them boring colors right there I'm gonna add two more and you see that right there because and, and I can spend why to the new people it's a color almost a vector but when it goes to this gray dot right here when it comes right here to this gray dots it gets changed to a scalar. It gets changed into a scalar. Or for the non mad people out there, it when it gets to that uh that gray socket, just the value. Such as four, six, nine, etc. And that's why it became gray because for the most part in Blender a value gray scale is just a value from zero to one but you can technically say from zero to positive infinity if you want to zero black one and beyond is white so that's why for the new for the newcomers out there that's why it changed gray because it got into that gray to the color ramp, that gray factor value, and then when they get outputted, all they can output it as, as a gray color, even though it's a color, still input as gray, output as gray. So we got that out the way. Now I want to add me a couple more, uh, a couple more switches. One, two. I'll go over here to evenly distribute them. Distribute evenly. And now here comes the magic. Wherever it's black, I'm gonna click on this one for black. If I can, let me highlight it some more. I'll put it on my selector, highlight it some more. Let's zoom in because all I'm dealing with this is color ramp. I'm gonna click on this, take it off of black, and you see my black area right here. I can say that. Here's where it's black. Black here, black here, black all up in here. And a little bit of black here. Oh, I better say gray. I better not say black. I better see say shades of gray. I can't say black. Because it don't look black. It looks grayish to my eyes. To your eyes, it may look black. Some of it's black. I can see at the top it looks black. But when it comes down to the bottom part, it looks grayish. Okay. So I'm gonna take my on black. I'm gonna change it to uh oh, let me zoom out some. Click. Now I'm going to change it to a white color. And we see right there, look, it looks white. So that's, I'll make it like that. So that's part one. See, we see I'm already manipulating my image. Where's gray at? I click on this. I may change that gray to a reddish color. And I may lighten it up so we see that it's reddish. I'm going to click back on this. Back on this. I mean, because I don't like our graves. Great. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave it like that. But we see now already. 
No, it was already red. I'm going to change it to a different color. It was red already. I'll make it uh, green. There. You see already? I've changed it. No. It looks completely where it was white at. I want to change that to uh, purple. You see that? My border. My border now is purple. Where it's white at, I want to change that to a bluish color. There we go, people. So we see right there. I can, I'm going to end my video right here. You see right here. The power of your shader. Now, I probably will go back into having a greater appreciation for the UV maps. But, like I said before, you can use your UV, you can do this on a three dimensional shape, but you probably will have to break up your figure. You probably have to go to um, the UV map and break your figure up. But while it's a plane, as you saw, let me show you, it's a plane. While it's a simple plane like this, you don't have to worry about one thing. You just can um, throw it right. You just can start manipulating right there. Thank you for stopping by, my people, to see my title, the correspondence between A, the UV map, and B, shading a texture. And like I said before, when you use the shading, shading works on textures. A texture is a repeating pattern. Like I said, I've been doing it for one year. I'm growing. I, got, I still want to do some other stuff I want to go over. But I'm growing. Thank you for stopping by. As I love to say to the new people, keep growing. Keep striving. Please don't stop. You see, I've been, I've been blended for 2.76. And I haven't stopped. I have my, I have my professional occupation. Blender is more like a hobby for me. But once you get into something, you know, like Blender, it's hard to give it up. Till the next time in the family, goody family. Peace. Maybe only two items, okay? I will just buy water and that's it. You don't need to get inside.